Welcome to a new video on my home automation open heaven and Node rest series. I got a new piece of kit from icstation.com and this is a Wi-Fi enabled relay. When they offered me this product to review I was quite excited because I could see that this uses an ASP8266 and then well it has two relays so I thought it's going to be fun maybe to see how it works and also to see uh, if I can do a modified firmware on it and maybe connect to MQTT and some of the other services. Unfortunately I realized it's not going to be that type of toy because as we look at it um, uh, more closely we we can see that uh, this board is actually resembles the design that we have seen uh, many years ago when the ESP8266 chips chip came out and um, back in the early days there was not a lot of knowledge available on the on the chipset and the and the microcontroller or the processor inside a chip so the way usually people use the ASP8266 is that they would have a microcontroller which were doing most of the let's say heavy lift well most of the the relay logic and then the ASP8266 would just connect to the microcontroller and then provide the you know the Wi-Fi and the internet connectivity so nowadays it's uh, it's not working like that because then we realize that whatever the microcontroller are doing, the ESP8266 can do it itself because it has enough power. So we don't see this type of arrangement uh, nowadays. And that also means that um, our well-known uh, alternate firmwares like esp Easy or Spurna or Tasmoda is not going to be useful for this specific device because it is not the ESP which is controlling all these peripherals like the relay, but it's just talking to the microcontroller inside. Well, which is there so we have to use this device as it is so its capabilities is somewhat limited to what uh, the uh, the original manufacturer has well basically put in it if you look at it from a little bit close up you can see that uh, it uses an ASP8266 the 01 so the original ASP8266 board which plugs in and then within the board we see some power management stuff, an STM micro, obviously two relays, a bunch of LEDs uh, for status uh, feedback, a couple of uh, buttons, and we also see some pin headers. And if I flip the, the board around, so these relays are uh, 12 volt rated and obviously they can switch mains power up to, what does it say, 10 amps. So these are the usual relays that we find in most of these DIY components. And by the way, IC Stations sells uh, four of these models, um, so you can get uh, one. You can get models with one relay or two relays, and then you can get models with 12 volts and 5 volts. So you can choose which one uh, suits best your application or your power supply. But they all have the same layout, and uh, so it's basically just the power and the number of relays are different. You can use this module and. An access point mode so it will create its own Wi-Fi and you can control it that way but I think the more typical uh, use case or scenario for this would be that you configure the sp 8266 to connect to your home Wi-Fi network and you can control this over the internet but you control it using sending binary commands to a TCP port and that's all it supports so there is no MQTT there is no HTTP I have to admit I don't know whether like node uh, sorry open hub or mm, let's say domotits or you know home home assistant would be able to do that node maybe but i think it could be very useful for people who are you know designing their own solution from the ground up or maybe even older system like plc's that uh, they are absolutely fine uh, communicating with tcp so they can obviously get use of uh, make use of this device just one more comment on the internal is as I said it has some pin headers and if I flip this over you can see that the pin headers include um, 5 volt RXTX and some other debugging pins so it should be possible to reprogram the uh, STM micro if somebody would have the schematics and uh, the uh, maybe the original code and by the way this uh, uh, board was manufactured by lc technology so you can go to www.lctech.cc and you can actually get the a little bit more information from this product than what you see on the on the ic station website so the ic station website appears to be that it has been 
translated like five times between different languages. So it's really hard to understand. And actually it is missing some crucial bit of information, which I'm going to share it with you now. I'm borrowing this device from this uh, uh, bench power supply. And so I have the 12 volt model. So I set it to 12 volt and um, uh, 500 milliamp uh, current limit. And if I turn it on, then what you see initially is you have after a couple of seconds, you see a LED, sorry, a red status LED and a green status LED blinking. So that's the that's the basic state. And as you can see, it's drawing about like 80 milliamps, so it's consuming about one watt in in standby. And of course, when it, whenever it, it communicates, then for a very brief moment, it peaks up to let's say 1.8 amps, sorry, 1.8 watts, but uh, for a really really short period of time. So um, in general, it, it consumes about one watt. To use this device, we would need a couple of um, mobile applications. I'm using an Android phone, and for the first one, I would be using a program which is called an app called ESP8266 Smart Config. And what this app does is basically it can configure the ESP8266 so it uh, knows your Wi Fi credentials. I'm pretty sure that the same application is available for iOS as well. Um, so at the moment it is not connected to any Wi-Fi network, so we need to put it to a mode where it actually creates its own access point. And the way to do that is you press the S1 button, and now you can see that the, uh, the blue LED comes up, so that means that it's in access point mode. So you come to your um, ESP8266 Smart Config applications, you provide your, you select your SSID, which is going to be the SSID your phone is connected to, and you have to type your password. I set this SSID is hidden to off, and the task result count to one, and then you just press confirm. And now it's, it is trying to talk to this ESP, and then it give, gives it the SSID and the password that it can connect to. It's going to take a few seconds. It took about 20 seconds, I think, and uh, what we can see now is that we have a blinking um, green LED, which is um, showing that, well, I think it's the blue is showing that it's connected to the Wi-Fi, and the blinking green LED is uh, showing that it is basically waiting for some commands, so it doesn't have any device connected to it. And in the ASP266 app, we will get a message saying that, your, we are, uh, our device has uh, successfully connected to the Wi-Fi network and it has an IP of 192.168.1.174 in my particular case. So it obviously got the IP from my router over DHCP. Um, because we will be talking to this device directly over TCP, there is one really key information that I don't have at the moment because I don't know how to set a fixed IP address on, for this device which would be absolutely crucial if you need to talk to it directly. So if anyone has that information, please share in the, in the video description, oh sorry, in the comment section. Now we have this device connected to my local Wi-Fi network. I'm, I'm using Thing, F-I-N-G, I'm not, not sure how to pronounce it. So I can see the, uh, the same IP and if I scan services, what I will find that it has one um, service on port 8080 which it says it's a HTTP proxy but actually it is not so it's just an open TCP um, port if I try to open in, in in a web browser then nothing really happens because it's actually not responding to any HTTP request so we can wait here forever and it's just not going to happen at this point I had some problems figuring out how to communicate with this device because uh, from the IC station website it wasn't really clear um, how it um, communicates and again they are talking about applications which don't even exist in the App Store or the ones really similar to it are actually unusable. I actually had to go back to the lctech.cc website because in their page they have some information about um, communicating with this device and what they state is that you need to spend, send specific TCP commands to this uh, device to respond to and basically turn the relays on and off and it has to be uh, a specific hex numbers and uh, you can see them on the screen so they open the first relay is A0010102 close the first relay is A0010001 and then similarly there is another P uh, 4 uh, byte 
uh, commands for the second and second relay, opening and, um, opening and closing them. Next, I thought that there must be an application which can uh, do this by having some buttons on the screen and sending TCP commands. And I was able to find this one, which is called the Wi-Fi TCP UDP controller. And that's an Android application. I don't believe that the same application exists for iOS, but there might be a similar applications. So um, if you are using iOS device, you have to figure this out yourself. What this uh, application allows me is that I can configure this device as a server. So if I go into the settings, actually I can have up to five of these, well, they call it controllers. So for each controllers, I specify the, the target. So the IP or domain is the IP address of the device. Again, because I need to specify it here, it would be great if this would be a fixed IP. The port is 8080, the communication is TCP. And then here you can rename the buttons. So in the original layout, there are a lot more buttons on this screen. I just removed them um, because, well, we only need four here. So uh, that's the original layout. So it has a, a group of nine buttons and then a group of another 15 buttons. Um, well, actually uh, 16 buttons. And then you can start renaming them. So you can, I, I've just given relay one to, uh, relay one on, relay, one off and then to button four and five relay one relay two on relay two off so i'm using the top four from this uh, three by three grid and you can also define the comments for each of them and i said that i want a hex sec command and then for each of them you can specify the the hex uh, digits that you want to send so a0010102 for uh, relay one on and a0010001 uh, for relay one off and similarly, there is another one for relay button to uh, four and five, which is relayed to on and off. And in the visibility, I just turn off all the other buttons that I don't need from the three by three grid. And also here in the settings, uh, oh yeah, in the settings mode, I just turned on that I only want the nine button mode, so I don't need the other three by three grid. And further down here in the button size, I increase the this one, the nine button mode DPI to 150. Again, that would change if you have other screen sizes. And again, nine button mode um, font size. And I somewhere I also said, I also changed the layout to a portrait layout because by default it's a landscape layout. I forgot, I forgot where to do that. But it should be somewhere here anyway. So now I have only four buttons on the screen instead of the gazillions which comes on default. And if I click on one, relay one on, relay one comes on, relay two comes on, and I can also turn them off. And by the way, you might notice that the LED is now, the green LED is not blinking anymore. It's, um, it's permanent green. That means that there is a device connected to the TCP port. So as soon as I close this application and it says socket closed, the LED goes back to blinking. So that is a really simple way of controlling this device. Um, actually, this application is quite decent. It's a really small application, hasn't been downloaded by a lot of people. It would have been nice if I could link uh, or assign the buttons to an actual device. So I wouldn't need to go through separate screens if I have multiples of these buttons. But um, that's how the app works. Maybe you can find another app which works better because uh, I was just thinking that maybe I could do the like uh, create a smaller buttons and then if I have multiple of these ones then I could have I could create more you know put them onto the same screen and control uh, multiple devices from the same screen. I mean he can do it here but you have to go into settings and you just have to go to a different controller and of course, now it could control another device, which is not doing it at the moment because uh, um, I don't have anything else. So it would be better if I could, you know, mash different controllers onto one single screen. As I said in the beginning, I don't think this device is for uh, like a simple plug-in, configure it in open hub or any of your home automation kind of uh, um, systems because that TCP 
communication might not be supported but if you want something really you know simple where you you have a Wi-Fi enabled device you want to control it over your phone you don't want a cloud service you don't want your own server then the, this device just does it so again this app is simple but it actually works you can you can pretty much customize it the way you want it and then as long as you are in the local network you can easily control your relays um, it's uh, it appears to be really reliable it, it is really really fast it responds um, instantaneously and again as i said this has a price between like a son of basic and a son of duo so looking at the ic station website it is uh, selling at 665 sorry 669 us which is on sale at the moment so i think that's a pretty decent price as long as you are happy with the the way it communicates and the fact that i don't think it can be uh, modified well having said that it has its pin header so you can technically reprogram the uh, STM micro and then enhance its functionality one more thing before anyone asks uh, well whilst I was testing this device uh, I, I didn't find any data or communication coming out of this device so I can certainly send uh, signals or these comments to turn the relays on and off but um, I couldn't find any other way to or any way to actually query what is the current status of the relay so you just have to rely on the fact that well you send a tcp communication you have a like a socket open with the device so whatever you send it will get uh, picked up and recognized so but there is no way of telling whether the current state of the relay is on and off i think that would be my review of this device for now thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video